My name is Garth Sharif and welcome to Getting Ready for the New Compilation Standards, Canadian Standards and Related Services 4200, replacing 9200. Now this is a big change from the current compilation standards. And I'll take you through the major changes and the overview, also how did we get to this point. But I did want to emphasize it is an impactful change to the current standards. So if you are a practitioner working with the compilation standards currently, you definitely want to get a head start on what the changes are and what you need to do to get ready today. So one of the first questions you might ask is how did we get here? Let's start back in 2018 when there was an exposure draft issued for Canadian Standards and Related Services 4200. So in 2018 there was an exposure draft and this standard has come from the International Standards on Related Services 4200. It was adopted from that standard. So there was an exposure draft, and I was part of working groups with the exposure drafts, trying to, at that point, with, along with other practitioners, understand what the changes were and how that would affect those working with compilation services. And we took a look at those changes. We'll talk about those changes today because we're here. In 2019, the final handbook material was approved for CSRS 4200. In 2020, the final handbook material was issued into the handbook. Now, here we are. 2021, this standard is effective for compiled financial information for periods ending on or after December 14th, 2021. So you might be thinking first before, what are the changes? Why are there changes to the standard? What was wrong with 9200? And that's a good question. So where does this come from? A lot of the assurance standards and actually quite a bit of them are now sourced from the international side. And I've been working with the assurance standards for a long time, starting with the Canadian auditing standards, which were sourced from the international standards on auditing. And when we take a look at the auditing standards, Canadian auditing standards, the review standards, CSRS, RE, Canadian standards on review engagements, 2400. And now the Canadian standards on related services, 4200, what has been the big goal? It has been consistency. Consistency in terms of the language and terminology. Now these are different services and I will uh, take a moment to show that they are still distinct services in terms of the level of assurance we're providing. But in terms of terminology, knowledge of business and documentation, there is a goal to have consistency across any type of assurance service an assurance practitioner provides. So this is the impetus, consistency in terminology. Of course, though, there are differences between the assurance services. When we talk about an audit, that is positive assurance, providing an opinion on the financial statements. And what we're talking about in this program is financial statements, financial information. When review engagements, that's referred to as limited assurance. And with compilations, that is still no assurance. But the language in between performing the engagement, accepting the engagement, and reporting, perf accepting, performing, and reporting three phases of an assurance engagement, that's where the consistency is taking place. And that's what we'll see when we talk about the Canadian Standards and Related Services 4200, a consistency in terms of understanding the entity, understanding what your relationships are with the different parties that are involved in the compilation service. So just like you would for an audit or review, but again, this is not an audit or review. Even though there's going to be more rigor around understanding the entity and documentation, things that I will take us through, this is still a compilation. And to that fact, let me read to you what a compilation engagement is as defined in the new standard CSRS 4200. A compilation engagement is not an assurance engagement. The engagement does not require the practitioner to perform procedures to verify the accuracy or completeness of the information provided by management. Accordingly, 
the practitioner does not express an audit opinion or review conclusion or provide any form of assurance on the compiled financial information. So this is still a compilation. It is not a review or audit. And we're gonna go through the major changes, but before I go through those, I did want to say to you this. I am a messenger. That's what you're seeing on the screen. I am the messaging service. I am not the authors of the current standard. I don't necessarily take an advocacy role for the current standard, just in case you feel like there is a lot more work that there was previously and you want to maybe take out some of your frustrations on myself. I will just say I'm messenger. I'm providing what the standards are going to do and how you should get ready versus having written the standards. But I will say this, consistency across the assurance standards in terms of terminology, I think is important. So there is a goal here towards that, but yes, there is more work in this new standard than there was previously. But I am a messenger, just to point that out. So one of the other things I wanted to point out before we begin this overview is that this is an overview. I'm going to go through the major changes that I think are important for practitioners to know today to make the adjustments, changes, and to communicate with their clients and third parties. But this course does not replace reading the standard. Reading the standard is very, very important. So what I would suggest is during the evening where you have time off, rather than watching Netflix or a new episode of whatever they have on Disney+, Plus, Loki, whatever is current at this point in time, instead of that, save that off as a reward and take a look and read the standard. The standard is readable. One of the things that we get from the international side, both with the Canadian auditing standards, the Canadian standards on related engagements, review engagements 2400, and this standard, Canadian standards on related services, is that the standard is readable, readable, accessible language that you can process and understand the implications. So do read the standard. That is something that I would emphasize in this program. So how are we going to break down the key changes that practitioners should be aware of? We're gonna look at it in three phases. First, we're going to look at the major changes around client acceptance and continuance or engagement acceptance and continuance. We're gonna look at the basis of accounting, which is really important, and that's why I'm also starting this way. We're gonna to go to the most important to still important, but not as important as the things I'm gonna tell you at the beginning. We'll also talk about the engagement letter and also the new ethical requirements that are part of the standard. Then we'll go into performing the engagement, where we'll talk about documentation, which is absolutely critical, as well as understanding the entity requirements around those. And then finally, we'll talk about the report and how the report has changed and key parts of the report that you should be aware of and to communicate that those changes to your clients and those that might be using the compilation report. Now, we'll go through each of these phases. There is another part that I'll bring up. Even though it's its own course, we will talk about the Canadian Standards on Quality Management 1 and 2 which is on its way. And you might be wondering, why am I going to be discussing a quality management standard? I'll leave that as a cliffhanger so that you keep watching this program, but it's something that you should be aware of. So that is the program that we're going to go through today. But one of the things that I'll leave you with at the beginning and at the end is that you wanna start thinking about the consequences and implications of this standard today including communication, communication with your clients, including communication with your staff, understanding the hours and budgeting that's involved with adopting the new standard. Let's begin with our first module, engagement, acceptance, and continuance.